A little while ago I spent ages producing a video tutorial on creating a 35mm frame effect around a picture. It took me ages to work out how to get all those little sprockets using quick masks, selections and everything else, but did it. Only to find now that in CS5 those clever people at Adobe have actually built one in. Boy, wouldn't it have saved me some time if it had them back in the days of, I think it was uh, CS3, CS4. Never mind, let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. First of all, ensure we have got the default colours of black and white. Just press D on the keyboard if you've got any other colours. Coming up, in with the sort of the shape tools here, we're going to drop down to the custom shape tool. That's the one we're after. To the menu bar. Ensure that you've got the first little icon pressed here. This is the shape layer. If I just, there it is there. Thank you very much. The shape layer. Moving across. This is the one we're after. The shape. If we just click on it you'll notice these are the default shapes which are loaded but if you come to the side we can click on this there's a whole range of other shapes built in as well including film right it's asking us do we want to replace these no we don't want to replace these but we're going to append it by adding it to the list if I just pull this out there it is there there's our 35 millimeter frame we can click down just clicking off you'll notice the color there is our foreground color this is going to be the color of the film. Right, coming to the picture, I'm going to click down inside the edge, dragging it across, pulling it out like that's uh, position there. There it is. So there's our 35 millimeter frame. Look how quick and easy that was. Um, but now we've reached this stage, if we use it as it is, we're going to lose a whole load of the image as well. We're going to lose bits and pieces over the edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to pick up the crop tool got the crop tool selected, we're going to drag it over the image like this we're going to come down to the bottom hold down that Alt or the Option key, so holding down Alt or Option you'll notice because you held down that Alt or Option it is coming out equally to the top and the bottom giving ourselves a fair bit of space coming to the side, repeating the process that Alt or Option key is held down again that sort of area there we don't have to come out so far this time releasing the alt or option pressing the return or enter and there it is you'll notice it's white it's added it to the background layer even though we were working on our path layer here because it has gone in as a path there it is the custom shape tool it's added it to the background layer the default color there being white right we're still working with our film layer here now what we're going to do is use Command T or Control T, it's the same as Edit Free Transform. We're going to come to this, press and hold down that Alt or Option key again. We can sort of pull this out like that. I'm just looking till we come to an edge. You notice the way things are just giving myself a bit more space there. Releasing it, and that goes nicely. Coming to the sides, holding down Alt or Option again, pulling the sides up, the two sides come out equally, that's the best part of using this method is the two sides are going to be drawn out equally like that, that looks pretty good, job nearly done, right just pressing enter or return to apply the transform, let's zoom to full screen using command 0, control 0, now you'll notice that it's actually got a fair bit of sort of black to the top and the bottom. You may, you, know, you could like that. So I'm going to come in. I've got the crop tool still selected. I'm going to drag it just over the area of the frame itself like this. You'll also notice that the side here, there's a fair bit of white showing on this area. And if you pull it in, what tends to happen is it snaps to the edge. And can you see there's just this little slither of white sort of coming down, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner down to the bottom. It gets very difficult trying to sort of come into the edge there, it snaps back and forth. Press Command Shift, Control Shift, that allows you to pull it in. Coming to the side, I'm still holding down Command Shift or Control Shift, going to pull that in like this. Once you're happy, we can release it. Come to the bottom, holding down the Alt or the Option key again, so hold down Alt or Option again. We're just going to pull this in until we get to the top of the sprockets there. Now you see that's equal to the top and the bottom. We're going to pull it out. And I'm going to come in just a touch there. Just going to make it slightly greater than the distance we have on the bottom. So it's going to be slightly greater to that area there. Once you have done all that, press enter or return. And there it is. 
job done. We have created our fr film frame effect. You'll notice that you've got a very thin grey sort of area around here. As soon as you, dis you click on the, the background layer, it disappears. That is purely because we are working essentially with parts. You can see if I go from the colour layer, as I just did, it disappears as soon as you click on the film frame. There it is because it's a path. It's showing us that little white line. Now, I think it would be a good idea at this stage to actually, you know, I know it's done a lot of work for us, but we're actually, you know, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to change it from a path, from a custom shape into a normal, a regular layer. We're going to put in a new empty layer. Clicking on this icon here puts in the new empty layer above the layer we were using. We're going to hold down that Alt or the Option key again, go into Layer, dropping down to Merge Visible. That has merged this layer into this new layer here, so we can actually get rid of that. That has now gone. Job done. So there it is. Right, so how about giving this just a little bit of depth? That looks pretty good as it is, but I think we could do with a little bit of depth on this. There it is. We're working on layer number one. We can come down, click on the FX icon, go in for Drop Shadow. There's our drop shadow, and if I just move it around, you can see the way the drop shadow is working. So lifting it up into position there, let's zoom in a bit more, move it across. That looks pretty good. Taking the size up, you can see the drop shadow coming through there. You can bring your cursor out, you can just reposition that like this. That looks pretty good. Click OK to it, and there it is. It gives you a lot more sort of depth, a lot more sort of uh, yeah, feel that you're actually against you know, it's lifted out as such rather than being flat on the background. Right, the next stage is, I'm not sure why it is a particularly good colour. It was the default colour we put in there for the background. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to come in and we're going to put a new empty layer. We're still working on layer 1 here. Let's just rename this by double clicking, calling it Film. Working on it, pressing down the Command key, so holding down Command or Control. Dropping down to this icon here, this is the create new layer icon which we used before. This time, because you held down command or control, it puts the new empty layer underneath the layer that you are working on. So there it is there. Clicking back on our film layer, picking up the one tool, clicking in. You've made a selection now inside the framework. We're going to go to edit, stroke, Three pixels is fine, colour not so fine, coming in, choosing a bit of a darker grey, something like that is pretty good. And we have got the inside set for the location, click OK to that. That has now put a selection, sorry, not a selection, that has put a stroke inside our selection, that's what I was going to say. Whilst we have got our selection, we're going to go to Select Inverse. So that's now put the selection around the outside. Now we're going to click onto layer number one. Clicking in here, we've got that grey colour, that's the colour we selected for the stroke, just perhaps making it a little bit darker. Click OK to that. Coming in, picking up your fill tool, dropping your fill tool inside the sort of the selection there. There it is, Command D or Control D, job done. Change the colour of the background, makes all the difference. You can see there it is there, that's the white, bit stark, grey, nice and subtle. You can see the drop shadow coming through there, job done. At this stage, what you can actually do now is perhaps you might want to save this as a PNG file, switch the other layers off, you can go to File, you can go to Save for Web and Devices, uh, coming down with this, there it is there, you can save this from the drop down menu as a PNG24, that's going to give it this transparent background, you can then use it in your slideshows or anything else, it really is a great way of, once you've created it, that's it. You can then use it on other images. So go on, give it a try. It really does work a treat. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.